is like a sower who went to sow the seed. And he went on to say that this, that seed is the word of God. And the seed is sown in our hearts. So it depends on how open we are. So as he sowed the seed, he did not choose where the seed would fall. So he spread it. And some fall, some fail. Or where they are not supposed to. And they never succeeded. And others fail on good soil. He continued to talk to us about the kingdom of God. And he will pray to God that those he has given to him would remain. No one will take him, will take them away from him. He will talk to Peter. He will talk to his disciples, asking them what the people think about him. And when Peter will reply, he told Peter, I will build my church on this rock. I will build my church on this rock. The church is the seed of the kingdom of God. And we belong to that church. So everybody is welcome into the church. And in the church, we find sinners. But the church is holy because it's the body of Christ. And Christ is the head. But we find sinners who are there. All of us, we are sinners. By the fact that we are mortals, we are limited in one way or the other. Yet, Christ continued to teach us how to live in this kingdom, to live as one in this body of which he is the head. And he's teaching us by the examples of his life, with the words of his mouth, and he expects us to do likewise. And so the words of his mouth, when we listen to his word, they take root in our hearts. And the words of God, the word of Christ supposed to lead us, to guide our actions. And so that by so doing, we will be able to live well, live together in unity manifesting, reflecting what we are, the seed of the kingdom of God, founded on love, because God is love, and he created us in love, and even when we deviated from the path that he left for us in love, he came to set us free. And even at that, before he left, he promised, I will send you an advocate, the one that will guide you. The spirit of the Most High, the Holy Spirit that dwells in this body, who continue to purify our actions, to purify us. Glory to Jesus. So last Sunday, Christ invited us, if anyone, if anyone of your brothers, of your sisters, have committed a sin against you, have done anything wrong against you, and come back to you to seek for forgiveness, you should forgive him.
sorry, Christ told us, if you see your brother doing anything bad, or your brother has done anything against you, and you feel very angry, go to him, reconcile with him, tell him amicably, if he listens to you, then you have gained your brother. Today, he is buttressing that very fact that in this body, in the community of believers, in the church, as we try to do the will of God in the various responsibilities that we have, either within or without, we continue to work together, making efforts to do what is right. But in the process, in the course of this, there are instances when we must have wronged somebody. And then the person comes to us to tell us, you have done me this. You should be able to forgive. He said, if your brother listens to you, you have gained your brother. You have gained your brother back into the fold. You have saved him. Do it gently. And you, that brother, you should be open to forgive him. The one that come to seek forgiveness from you. And so today, we are called to reflect on the theme of forgiveness. And that is why in the first reading, take, came from Ecclesiasticals. We are called to forgive our neighbor so that when we pray, our sins will be forgiven. We continue to wrong against others, knowingly or unknowingly. We continue to do that. But if we are holding grudges against others, and are praying God to forgive us of what we have done. If we are holding grudges, then our prayers would be as useless as anything. And so we are invited to forgive. To forgive your brother has done something wrong and has come to you to say, I'm sorry. Be ready. Be open. And forgiving of his sins, anger and wrath, these also are abominations. And a sinful person, a simple man, will possess them. It's only when we are evil, we are so sinful. Okay, we are sinners, and we harbor that. But then, Christ is calling on us. Yes, we are sinners. But we have the ability, the capacity to forgive, to let go, leave vengeance. Vengeance is for God. Vengeance is for God. You know, first of all, it is very difficult that you have done something wrong and somebody woke up to you and informs you that this is what you have done. You have done this and it is very wrong. Immediately you feel condemned. And it is very difficult for many of us to accept this. To accept our wrongdoings. It is very difficult. We justify. We philosophize. We rationalize. We did this because of this and because you also did this and so on and so on. Because it is very difficult for us to accept our own limitations to accept our own shortcomings. And the person who is coming to inform that here you have done wrong, it is not the right thing. We feel so bad about it. And that is why Christ admonished us, encouraged us, 
that we should be gentle in making corrections. Fraternal corrections is what he was emphasizing. And today, he is asking us to forgive. And Ben Sidrak is saying, forgive your neighbor, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. In the psalm, we responded, the Lord is compassion and love. He is slow to anger, rich in mercy. He is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. Paul's letter to Timothy reminds us that a good fruit, sorry, a good tree bears good fruit. And then our tree were rooted in the tree of Christ. And we are supposed to manifest this aspect of good fruits in us. So if Christ is compassion and love, it means that we have to manifest these virtues, these aspects of goodness in our dealings with one another. We should be merciful to others, forgiving them of their sins. If anybody have done wrong against me and come to apologize, I should be open to accepting his own wrongdoing to set him free just like we are sinners. Christ is love. He created us in love, but we disobeyed. We wronged against, sorry, God is love, created us in love. We disobeyed, have deviated from the path he left for us. Yet, every now and then, we continue to commit sin, knowingly or unknowingly. And all the time, we come and seek forgiveness. He forgives us of our sins. And that is what we continue to do. And so if we are part and parcel of the body of Christ, then we should be good fruits. Or we should be able to yield good fruits in hundredfold, in plentiful fruits that will last. To show mercy, to be compassionate, to love one another. Mercy manifests itself in love, in charity. And so that is what is expected of this body of Christ where you and I belong. Christ is telling us that. This is how your father is. And so if you belong to me, this is how you should be. This is how we should behave because we are good fruits coming from good tree. And St. Paul, in the second reading taken from Romans, is telling us that none of us live for himself alone, whether alive or dead. We belong to the Lord. We belong to the Lord. And if we belong to the Lord, we belong to each other. We affect each other by our actions, by our words, by what we do. We are, for, we are meant for each other. And when we do good, we are helping to nature. We are helping to manifest. We are helping to preach. We are helping to bring closer this kingdom of God. This good news that Christ came and is preaching. The good news, remember that Christ is preaching, even in the gospel as we hear, is preaching the kingdom of heaven. If he's preaching the kingdom of heaven, and we are preaching the good news, he is living the kingdom of heaven by his words and his actions. That is why anywhere he went, he was demonstrating that kingdom, and he will say the kingdom of God is here in your midst. It is there in your midst. Because of the actions that he was carrying out, we are manifesting the signs of the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, the blind see. 
The deaf hear, the dumb speak, the cripple walk, and all those who are in the kingdom are alive. And that is what Christ was doing. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. He healed the leper. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Oh, mighty healer, he's the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Even today, my Lord is doing good. We are the body of Christ. We are to do the same. And in the gospel, Peter is asking this same brother of mine who has done something to me that I'm not happy with him still now. How many times, okay, you say, I should forgive him if he come to apologize. So how many times? Seven is okay. I think seven is okay. No, I didn't say seven bad. Seventy times seven or seventy-seven times. It means you should forgive without limit. Just like God is merciful without limit. If not, why sinners? Why evil continue to triumph in the society that we live and those who are good suffer? Because God is love and is merciful and his mercy is without end. He is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. So I do not say seven times by seven times seven or 77 times or to forgive without limit. May the good Lord bless this words in our hearts through Christ our Lord.